welcome to Austria, everyone. Oh, beautiful, yeah. absolutely beautiful. It is. We we just landed in Salzburg, and already there's a bloody huge mountain. Got a right lovely, lovely hire car. Yeah, this, the, also this is the best hire car we've ever had. <laughs> um, remember the Tippo and the van last time? Tippo didn't even have Bluetooth, but no. this has got everything. God's sake, stop! Him and his bloody know. internet tests. He just shoved his internet tests. The thing is. <laughs> The We've got free roaming out here. The thing is, over here in Austria, it's very expensive to hire a car anyway. Yeah. And because I've there's got... no cheap places like uh, try, ones that try and scam no, you. No, they're all know? about 400 odd quid just for an ordinary car. And this, with the access cover, so if you do have an accident, you're covered, it's 520 quid. But it's about 100 quid for Josh to be able to drive there because he's a yeah. young driver. No, it wasn't that. It's just for additional driver, wasn't it? Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you come on our side of the road. It's parking outside his house. Um, yeah, the flight over was right, only an hour and a yeah, half, but, but it took an hour for us to take off because yeah, it was Gatwick. It was almost an hour um, late, so. Mm. But that's Gatwick for you. Yeah. That's the trouble with Gatwick. I slept all right. I slept for five hours. Oh, I slept um, for about three. Oh, God, a cyclist almost came out. Ooh, a bike down there. Yeah. yeah, um, anyway, we've got about a two hour drive to the hotel. Well, it turns out it wasn't actually a two hour drive, it should have been an hour drive. But, because of the M6 toll, I always have, on Google Maps, tolls turned off. And out here, with the hire car, toll roads come free. So I should have turned it off. And that would have made it only an hour long. At the moment, it's an hour and a half. Because the A10 motorway here is completely congested at the moment. But it's not really a problem because it's going to be a lovely drive through the mountains. It's funny because it's like, from start to finish, we left at three o'clock this morning, or quarter past three, and we'd be there about three-ish. So it's about 12 hours from start to finish. Mm. But we don't like the early mornings, but we didn't have a choice. It's the only all the stressful time. stuff's out of the way now. Yeah. We've had to go to the you just relax. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so... Let's hope you enjoy Austria yeah. as much as we are it's... going to, I think. Hopefully. Let's yeah. just hope it's the weather stays nice. dry. Why yeah, this... oh, is she giggling about in the back? <laughs> She's trying to concentrate and also talk to the camera, and it's funny. Oh. Let's hope you enjoy Austria. So this is the inside of it, look, it's automatic, we wanted a manual but 90% of the cars out here are automatic. Well it's just that hire company Josh I think. Just look at that view. That hire company is 90% of their yeah. vehicles. Um, so it's got aircon, it's got, you know, it's got a thousand more things than that bloody, it's what's it called, uh, the Renault Kanga. We actually asked for and, a, Android Auto. a Mercedes A class. Mm. But they give you the equivalent. So this is a Skoda. I don't know. Some weird name. Kodic or something. <laughs> what the hell? Jesus. Country lanes. You have to keep driving off the road. Got a digital dash as well. That's the first time Mum has ever seen that before. Someone's put it out now. <laughs> they don't wait. And now the speed, speedo there, Josh. On Mum's dash, it says. Oh, there you go, Mum. Look, that tells you the speed. That you got to go. Oh, okay. 30km. Oh, 30, Jesus. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's automatic, it. everything. How does it go? Half leather then? seats. All cows. Because it uses GPS. Oh. Um, Lovely. Yeah, it's, I'll show you the outside soon. We're high, it, high up as well. houses I love as well, with the big roofs. Mm. Before we went to the apartment, we went to Audi, which is called Hoffer out here. Here we are, guys. 
for the apartment now. Give you a quick Doctor, tour. George, what's the time? Here's the kitchen. All marble. Dinette there. But um, the main thing is, of course, that view. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> um, everything else in comparison <laughs> is nothing compared to that view. That is just unbelievably nice. And then in here. Yeah, it looks like Mum's hand washing. Yeah. The living quarters. There's uh, mine and Dad's bedroom, or just my bedroom, we don't know yet. Look at that. No mooring on any canal is as beautiful as that. Even the clangoffling. And we got a toilet. Look at that. Oh, and a bath. Oh, bath. If you're now, but you know it feels like when you can finally have a bath again. Unfortunately, you don't have enough water to do that on a boat. Water space. This is the uh, other bedroom. Oh my god. This is cozy. I mean, I've got a skylight, but it's cozy. So yeah, that's our tour. Um, guess we'll see you tomorrow because we're very tired, and we'd like to just rest now. So yeah, this is our Coda Skodiak, and it's a very fancy SUV. Not only have we never had an SUV on holiday before, but we've never had a car this fancy. All the other hire cars we usually get are literally bitch basic. If you remember, the hire car we had in Crete was a 2020 Fiat Tipo. Didn't even have Bluetooth. Um, hello. Uh, it's the next day. Um... And uh, we're in front of the deep end today, guys. Because uh, it's not a very really nice day, it's sort of day you want to go visit a cave. Um, yes, yeah, because it's not a very really nice day. Uh -huh. yeah, it's very, very nice cloudy, day. you can't see much. Uh, yeah, so we're going to the biggest ice cave in the world today. Yeah. And it did cost quite a, about, about 90 30, pounds. Yeah, 35, 35 euro. euros each, but it's worth it, I um, think. It's going to be. This is the biggest one in the world. Uh, the only trouble is, there's a 300-foot uh, climb <laughs> to the uh, the lift, the ski lift, and then you take a ski lift up, it's and then cable car, isn't it? cable car, yeah, uh, and then um, you do another 340-foot climb to the cave entrance, which is about 720 feet, I think. Over one mile. Well, we're gonna fit. We're gonna keep fit. Mm. But the only thing is, is Andy because of his knees. He's not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's hope. That, let's hope we can do it. It's a very busy, busy tourist place. This is. Yeah. We don't like touristy places, but no. I think this is going well worth it. One you just have to do. I think. You can't come here and not go to the biggest ice cave in the world, can you? No. <laughs> um. So yeah, we're going there today. I'm gonna be driving, and uh, on the wrong side of the road. 
<laughs> um, many people would argue it's the right side of the road. It should be. I wish it was this side of the, of the road in the UK. Because it would be a lot easier. And I've um, got to drive an automatic again. Mm -hmm. And it takes me a little while to get used to it's a, a manual car. or an automatic. After I haven't driven one or the other. Um, yeah, it's quite big. But, um, yeah, it's a nice case, so it's going to be very, very cold. But the climb up is going to be very hot because it's going to be very steep. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we've had to pack some cold clothes with us. Uh, Warm it's starting clothes. to rain now, actually. <laughs> cold clothes. Just thought I'd show you guys that we are stuck in traffic. <laughs> we get there we should have been on the A10 at that point. If you remember I said earlier in the video that the A10 is extremely congested. Well, it was literally at a standstill. So much so that people were getting out of their cars. So we had to go this alternative route. And we did manage to get there just in time. So we're here. Is that the biggest size cave in the world? Or not? We are making our way up. It's going to be quite a trek. Already panting and it's just there. Back here! Yeah, it's gonna be hard work. <sighs> Managed to make it through traffic in time. Got here just a time, but for some reason it was a ten minutes later we were supposed to go through. But yeah, gotta make our way up. 720 feet and one cable car ride. But uh, yeah, can't see much view today. But loads of low cloud. They're building these tunnels to make it quicker to get up to the top, where the cave is. You can still take the alternative scenic route, but I find these tunnels quite interesting and an extra attraction to the place. The only trouble is with doing this on a cloudy day is the fact that we can't see anything really. If it was a clear day, oh my god, the views from here would have been absolutely outstanding. And it was the cable car, which are absolutely jam-packed, and so were we. And you thought you'd get a nice view from it, and we did, sort of, but uh, went into the clouds for a bit. At this point you usually see the zigzag up to the cave entrance but you can't see anything and that route around the tunnel is the old route. This tunnel here has only really recently been built. You can see that these walkways have a concrete roof for a very good reason. As you can see we made it up to the cave entrance, it did take about 40 minutes. As you can see I'm steaming. Oh, that's up. Yeah. I'm sweating so much. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Quite cold here at the you can see your breath. Yeah. Do your breath, Josh. It's going to be about like below zero. Like Josh is smoking. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, that was not too bad actually. Dad's made it up, which is He's Good. coming up now. Here he is. Here he is. He's having a rest. His um, yeah, his heart rate's going a bit, isn't it, Josh? It was lovely to see these chuffs, part of the Corvid family. Very rare in the UK, Dad says. Before you enter the cave, there's a gale force wind. And this wind, in the winter, always blows through the cave. And that's what makes the limestone in here so cold, which allows for the ice to form. So in the winter, these doors are always open. But in the summer, they close them, because otherwise, it'll be extremely windy inside the cave. Take a break every five to ten minutes at these stops. I'm going to tell you some things about the cave. Uh, my name is Martin, and I'm your food guide for today. We're in the cave now, guys. Um, I went from absolute sweat and boiling to yeah, freezing. I've got a jump on, I've got a coat on, gloves. Um, I've got about 300 steps now. We have, um, but we're no one's behind us. That's great. So 
this cave was discovered by Anton Possolt, a natural scientist from Salzburg. He discovered it in 1879, though he only explored the first 200 metres inside the cave, which is where we are now. And there's a little cross where he marked, which I'll show you in a minute. Unfortunately, he couldn't go any further because he just wasn't prepared. He didn't have the equipment to make it up because it's just so steep. You can just about make out the X there on that rock, which he marked down in 1879. This giant ice wall here has an inclination of about 70 degrees and the first cave explorers managed to climb up there in 1913. So I do apologise for the low light and the video noise. Um, it's just I'm recording on a smartphone so it's not really the best thing for it and the lighting in this cave is not very good because they like to keep it atmospheric with the old lanterns so it's sort of the place you have to experience yourself really. yeah, This here is called the Castle of Humia It is about 100 years old and also the largest sculpture in our cave It's named after Humia, an ice giant from the North Germanic Adam mythology and this sculpture is this big because above it there is a huge crack inside the rock. And through, the, through this crack every spring a lot of melting water can get into the cave and it freezes on the sculpture to ice again so it grows on and on every year. What you can see here also very clearly is how the wind changes the sculptures. During winter the door downstairs is always open so the wind blows into the cave steadily and it carves out the ice a little bit and forms these round edges like here on the side. Now we are also going to see the back side of Hymia's castle. For that, please just walk around the corner and meet me on the other side. Some history. So the first tours inside here already took place in 1920. Back then they looked a little bit different because there was no road up the hill, no cable car and also no staircase. So you had to hike up <coughs> the valley and the tour inside here lasted about 3 to 4 hours because you had to climb through it with an ice pink and crampons. Yet many things changed since then as you can see. So also the ice grew a lot. At this point here you would have stood 10 meters lower than 100 years ago. But also one thing stayed the same, lighting. Since 100 years now, we use these carbide lamps and this magnesium band. And they light up the cave in this very special atmosphere. So this sculpture used to be called the elephant, but it did lose its trunk at one point, and uh, he says it almost looks like a fish now, but he says everyone else sees something different. But I see a woolly mammoth, actually. Jesus. He is Jesus. I'm beginning to like him. Are you? <laughs> now we are already one kilometer, kilometer inside the mountain at the Ice Palace. Uh, behind my back, the cave continues for another 41 kilometers, but without ice. Because during the winter, the wind doesn't go strong enough back there to cool down the limestone, and so it's a little bit warmer, and the water which, which gets in there during the spring just stays water. And the ice that we are standing right now, it 
could not break through because it is nine meters thick. And also, the oldest ice in our age could have aged up around 10,000 years. So now we've reached our point of return. So we're going to walk back outside again, back to daylight. And there is still one more stop to come. So you can't say how old the ice is by just counting lines. And as you can see, the ice already reached to the top, so also that it's a little bit smaller. And we know that the bottom line here, the stones inside, is about 2,500 years old. So still a little bit younger than the oldest ice that the ice covers. And now in front of us, the last 59 steps upstairs, and then we reach the highest point of our tour on 1,775 meters. So we climb up inside the gate 134 meters in altitude, which is comparable with the 44 skyscraper. So, quite a, quite a good job. <laughs> so, and after that, we're going to walk back down together. I think everyone is served a good meal or something like that. Is that as good as the Bulgarian cave, Mum? No. I'm not sure really, because that's obviously it's completely different. Yeah, can't compare Bulgarian, the two. Can't no. Can't compare because Bulgarian caves were like just caves, but they were fantastic. I've never been in an ice cave. Maybe we'll go to Bulgaria if we haven't shown you. <laughs> you can't fantastic. really beat that ice cave. It's the biggest no. one in the world. So. What's annoying? I'll just take loads of photographs and they don't come out very well. Ooh. Can't believe these chuffs. They're so Ooh. rare in Britain now. And they're everywhere. I've just yeah. nesting up there. And he's quite pleased because we've got chuffs up here. Yeah. He's taken the fat glass and gave him some food. <laughs> By the time we came back out of the cave, the fog had seemed to clear somewhat and we could actually see some of the view. Going through the cloud. Oh, it says hold on to that handle. Going through the cloud. And here's the pylon, here's the, here's the bit. What was it? Here's the pylon, that makes you shake, yeah. Oh. You press the button. I don't know. Really? Oh. This is a cool bit.
See that river running through the valley there? We're going to have a little look at that in a minute. It started up on top here originally, and over the years it's just worn itself down and down and down. We're all the way down at the river now, and uh, right in front of the mountain we were just inside. So this river is the River Solzac, and it is a tributary of the River Inn, and it is 225 kilometers long. Uh, we may have stumbled across an old mine here. An old quarry. Look at that. Oh wow. Yeah, you can tell that's mountain water. It's pretty cold, but yeah, you can swim in that. Look at the rate of that. That is two times the speed of at least of Red Board Thames. Dad has come to I don't know if it's big enough, though, this one. the stick shop so he can buy himself a hiking stick here. So here we are on a little beach, yes, lovely river little beach. beach. Um, oh God, that's the mountain we're up inside, mm -hmm. up there. Um, and now all the way down at the bottom here on the river. By the river? Yeah, it's absolutely but stunning. this river is so fast. Yeah, it's, it's like two times the speed of the Thames. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's absolutely lovely. It's just a beautiful little river beach here. And um, I just went for a little walk down here. We've got a walk down here, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, it's lovely. lovely. Little site. But mm. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't like to swim in there. I think um, too fast, yeah. Josh, Josh reckons I could swim, but you need the rope yeah. to keep hold back. of it. We're flowing down the river. Um, <laughs> that would be funny. I'd make a good vlog. It's about it? five o'clock now. Yeah. We're very tired now. Yeah. Long day. We're going to end the vlog here because it's been a very long one, of course, I imagine. Um, if you all enjoyed it, give it a like, subscribe, yeah. and uh, I guess we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, see you later. Bye.